the shelf. I really, I really enjoyed your movie. And um, it's a thrilling heist movie. There's these very colorful characters, there's action, there's comedy in it. But then this movie has a lot more heart than I was expecting. It's, it's a very earnest film at its core. And I'm wondering, how was this film pitched to you? And what were your thoughts when you first read the script? I think um, what I loved about it was uh, how different it is to anything that I've seen for a long time um, and how different it is actually to, to Army of, of the Dead. It's such a different genre and such a, a, a mashup of genres that is so fresh. Um, that's what excited me about it. No, bro, I was just going to say, exactly to echo what Stu said uh, but also what was uh, very exciting about it is the fact that when you're fleshing out uh, this this universe and you know Zach obviously has a lot of um, references to his Snyderverse when thinking about his army of the universe I think it's so interesting to not have just another back-to-back -back zombie movie uh, because in reality things are different there are different paces um, and I think this movie definitely reflects that you can still have the excitement of a heist, um, but literally in the same world as zombies without one in the movie. I think it's incredible. And this movie could very easily be about the cops pursuing the crooks because technically you're the bad guys. Uh, what is it about your, your crew in the film that gets the audience on their side? I think they're all real characters. I think they're all really fleshed out um, characters that we grow to, that we, that we sort of fall in love with really quickly all for their own individual um, things. And that's a sort of testament to the work that Matthias was doing with us all in the weeks leading up to it, where we got to sort of add things and we got to ad lib stuff and try things and, um, and, and try things on the day. To sort of try and make these characters real. You know, you don't really get that opportunity in, in action films or normal action films. You know, we, we got to really concentrate on the, on the, characters and the acting which was lovely so for the character of brad he's such a complicated character because he believes he's the hero even when he's acting like the worst person in the world uh he's the sort of person who can justify any heinous act and think he's not feel any sort of guilt or remorse um can you talk about how you developed this character and like what's what was your process to bringing him and his his moral uh compass to the screen yeah, I think he's got he's got such uh, he's sort of created this very small world around him, which is the crew, and he's so protected in that because they all have such defined roles, and his role is the alpha, and and that's never really um, challenged. And any time that they get into trouble or there's something you know something starts to come into the crew, they, he moves them on. I feel so with. Dieter coming into it, that is when we start to see the sort of real Brad or or the or the vulnerable part of Brad. But as we know with with these sorts of guys, you you um who've been told not to cry as kids, it, it doesn't come out in tears and you can't show that vulnerability. So it comes out in this anger and this rage. So I sort of you know understand or I can I can see where he's come from and why he is. Um it, but yeah he he is yeah, that's just the way he is. And with Rolf, it's not so much that he's a bad guy, but he goes along with things. He goes along with bad ideas. Can you talk about your mentality in bringing Rolf to life? Yep. I just think uh, if you think of this crew uh, as not a bunch of adults, but being in high school, you've got Brad, this jock, this, this guy who's uh, leading from the front, both physically and verbally, uh, but really everybody knows that the, the genuine power, the one who's making all the right decisions uh, is Natalie Emanuel's character, Gwendolyn. And so like Rolf is kind of caught in his cat, catch weight between, oh, I've got to keep him sweet, but she's the one with the great idea. So I've got to keep her sweet. And I think it's just a, a really good little microcosm of how tricky it is uh, to keep everybody happy within a friendship group. Uh, and how easy it is to be dragged off in the wrong direction with, without any spoilers. Um, that's, I think that's an, an emotion that every single one of our characters feel, you know? And if you guys had to go on a real world heist and you could bring one member of this crew along with you, who would be your partner? Oh, shit. 
Dave Bautista. Can I have Dave, please? Because I know he's not. I, I'll take. I'm going to take Goose. Do you know what I am actually going to take you, mate? If you come with me, bro. Just for, just you, for the crack, in, a, in a real world high scenario, you should yeah. for the ten times out of ten. Because the reality is, I'm fucked anyway, so I might as well have a bit of crack. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean, bro? You know, like at the end of the day, man, we we'll go down and have a laugh as we go. You exactly. know. Were you guys fans of heist movies? There's there's so many great ones out there. You have the classics like Le Cirque Rouge. You have the uh, Italian Job. Um, were you guys a fan? And did you pull from any of these films to help form uh, shape your performances in the film? Yes, I was, I'm a massive fan of Point Break. Uh, I think it's one of the greatest heist movies of all time. Um, I know Stu wasn't a massive fan of Point Break. So is there anything else out there, Stu, that you'd like to... He's stolen my film. This is what he does. He's nicking my films. He's trying to push me to, like say Pixar or something stupid, but I'm not going to do that, man. I'm going to Google some heist films and I'm going to say them on instead, all right? Uh, yeah, I love, I mean, like, all, all of those heist films, you can't beat a heist film, and especially that era, you know, the 90s and noughties. There was one I saw, I mean, like, Ocean's Eleven and, and those, you know, the, the, this has got such, the way that they're cut and the way that they're edited and the style of it, I feel like we've got a little hint to that. But I saw a great heist film a couple of years ago called uh, is it Den of Thieves? The the one with uh, Jerry Butler. Yeah, it's a Fifty great Cent film, bro. You got to watch it. It's brilliant. Was it good? Yeah, it's great. It's a Den of Thieves, isn't it? Is it like three years ago? It's brilliant. Watch it. Great heist. You film. know what? The now that you mention that, the Ice Cube one with Mark Wahlberg back in the day. That was was that heistish? What's that? I, I don't know. They're they're part of the military and they rob up. What was that? Three Kings. Yeah, that was no, not heisty. Yeah, it's pretty heisty. That's a good one. That's an underrated one. Not a lot of people remember that one. George Clooney is dope. And Army of Thieves. That's gonna. That's top of the list of heist. No, films. that shit, mate. Don't watch that. Fucking shit. I think they both make a great double feature. <laughs> um, making movies seems like the most glamorous job in the world, but you know the reality of it. it it's very long days, early call times, a lot of waiting around. Um, being able to go back to work during COVID after everything shifted, did it give you a new appreciation for, you know, being on set? How did things feel just working on uh, Army of Thieves? I mean, for me personally, uh, I think the biggest thing that I knew before and it cemented it is the work that the teams of people behind the scenes put in and I genuinely mean that from an individual whose responsibility is to make sure that craft services is there on time all the way up to you know Bernie who's who's our DOP um uh, I know Stu is 100% behind this as well you cannot make movies you cannot make television without the undeniable effort uh, and energy that the people behind the scenes put in. Um, so my appreciation for them just continues to to go through the roof um, because ultimately at the time that we were filming this, COVID was so new that people didn't know that if they got it, if they would make it through. And, and I think you have to commend the people behind the scenes who don't get to do the fun bits that me and Stu do. They don't get to do this interview with you um, or see themselves on the television. They're, they're, they're a name at the end of the movie in the credits, but they are they are as important as anybody uh, in the whole process, you know? Great answer. Well, uh, thank you so much for your time, guys. I really enjoyed your movie and uh, have a fun day out there promoting the film. Thanks, Victor. <laughs>